Hey there, so this is a, a overdue video, long-awaited video. This is how to mix up chlorhexidine for cleaning after reptiles. Uh, chlorhexidine is one of the two chemicals that kills coccidia, and I know I've seen other reptile channels do videos on coccidia. Some mention chlorhexidine, oh you have to mix it up just right, but they don't tell you how. Um, I'm going to tell you how, and this is something I learned from my vet. And this is what you're going to spray uh, when your reptile has, has pooped. You know, you're going to clean that out, but you're going to spray this on there. Leave it for, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or something, or maybe not even that long. It, it works pretty quick, but you're going to spray it around and clean the area with this. So if there is coccidia, um, your reptile can't re-ingest that coccidia and then build up that bacteria in their system. Actually, I say bacteria, I think it's a parasite, but either way, this kills it. The other chemical is ammonia, and I don't recommend that. That's really, really tricky to use. Now, there's another kind of spray you can buy that is ammonia-based. Um, that's not what I use. I use this one because it's food safe. It's, it's not gonna harm your reptile if they get some on them. Um, it's just good stuff, you know, bleach does not kill coccidia. Uh, bleach is good for everything else, you know, you need to, you can't really do reptile care in a natural way, you have to use chemicals, otherwise they're just going to get sick and die, that's just how it's going to go. Uh, it might be a few months, it might be a few years, but that's going to happen. Um, so sorry to be negative there, but this is what you do. Now, <laughs> the background picture was from another video, but it works for this one, too. So this is what you buy. Chlorhexidine solution. I'm going to put a link in the description. Notice this 2% right there. Kind of important. If you're going to mix this up, whatever you get, make sure it's 2%. Dervet is used for animals. See down here, for animal use only. If you get this stuff for people, it's going to have some kind of scent in it. Uh, some kind of you know, something to make it smell better. You don't need those additives. This was for animals, and I got this on Amazon. This bottle was maybe 12 bucks, no big deal. There's still a lot in it, um, and a little goes a long way because you're going to mix it to in a 1 to 10 ratio. I'm going to show you how. Uh, you need a sprayer. I got this one at the co-op. See, it's got horses on it, uh, but what was cool about this, it's got these all these lines so all those are helpful depending on what you're mixing up I thought that's that's gonna help me out because I needed to do see dilution ratios right here um, you fill it to the top line but if you need to do down here at the bottom it's got a 1 in 10 ratio a 1 in 9 ratio on and on but the way you get the liquid right, and that's what I'm going to explain here, you're going to get the meniscus exactly perfect. I say exactly perfect. It just needs to be the same way on this line as you do it on this line. Okay? The bottom line down here versus this up here. This is going to be a 1 to 10 ratio because you can see on the bottom, it's, it's one of the very, very bottom lines. You probably can't see that in the video, but... The 1 colon 10 symbol basically means 1 part colon 10 parts total. 1 part of your solution, and it's diluted in 10 parts total. So basically, you're going to put, if you don't have lines, 1, you could use something like this. As long as it's the same, it doesn't matter if it's a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Same measurement. One measurement of that, nine more of water. That's one to ten, because there's ten parts total. One part is the solution. So, if I can get this clear, there's a meniscus. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. If you look closely at a glass, uh, water kind of, it climbs up the sides. And then it kind of, it curves downward. It, it'll curve down. 
And if you're going to measure liquids, you need to make sure that that bottom, super bottom line that was in focus for just a millisecond, which is irritating. <laughs> I'm not trying to explain the bottom of that. So if you look straight on, the beautiful part is you're not going to be doing it through a video, but straight on, you're going to see that there's a very, very bottom. It's, you're going to see like several lines, but the bottom one, that's the bottom of the meniscus. And that's where you need to measure from. So that meniscus needs to be as close to the middle of your line as you can get it. And if you need to put in just drops at a time, then do it. Um, also, if you're going to measure with one of these, I wonder if I can do it one-handed. Probably not. I'm going to set the camera down and then get it and then pick the camera back up. Okay, if you have to do it the old school way, just make sure you measure the same way every time. That's not quite what I meant, but sometimes you can scoop up liquid with this and the bubble kind of goes above the tablespoon edges. As long as you measure the same way with every scoop, you're good. And if you need help counting so you don't lose count like me, do your scoop, mark down a tally mark, and then you'll get it right. As long as you try to be close, you're going to get there. It's going to be fine. It doesn't have to be exact titration of liquids like you're in a chemistry lab. It doesn't. But however you measure these parts, you need to measure it the same way with, with every one. If you've got another method or, let's see, like a... I'm trying to think of what the things are called that measure the milliliters. You get them from the vet for medicine, you could use that too and just get it exactly the same every time and do it that way. Let me see if I can get one of these the way I meant to. This is hard to do. It's hard to do out of a glass anyway. Maybe get a bowl. Yeah, I can't get it above. But just make it the same every time and it's fine. So for a 2%... It's a 1 in 10 ratio, 1 part solution, 9 parts of the water. Um, you can also use one of these to measure. Just make sure that meniscus is either the top or bottom, hopefully the middle of the line. Just go slow. You'll do fine. You can even um, use something like this and put your 1 ounce in the bottom in your nine more and go up to 10 and then pour it in your sprayer. It's good stuff. And if you need one of these, you need something like this, go buy it. You'll use it again. I got that at the co-op as well. And it's kind of, it's interesting. It's got cups. It's got grams, sugar and flour. Grams is more for dried stuff. Milliliters, teaspoons. Look at that, 72 teaspoons at the top tablespoons and then at the bottom it's got pony shot jigger double <laughs> so your teacup your wine glass this thing's pretty cool but i got that at the co-op so so you can use a lot of things and um syringe that's the word you can even buy a syringe and measure it that way that might be probably the easiest way so this is how you do it. You put it in a sprayer. Um, and see, I've already used enough. Every single time you clean up their poo, every single time, you clean the area with that. You can take everything out and clean the glass. Clean everything, because poo gets on the glass. Um, but what I do, if I'm sterilizing the whole tank, I'll take everything out. Some things, I'll, I'll bleach stuff, you know, not near the animals. And you mix up bleach according to the bottle. I think it's a, a 1 in 30 dilution and you get a sprayer and you spray things off and for bleach you want to leave it for about 15 minutes and then rinse and rinse and rinse until you don't smell any more bleach and it takes some time. Uh, with chlorhexidine there's not any fumes that are super dangerous. Uh, my dragons are in the tank when I spray it in there because um, I'm not spraying the whole thing I'm just spot cleaning after the poo 
Uh, do not let them walk through the poo and then walk over their food bowl and then eat out of that food bowl later because that's what coccidia does. It's, it, you know, they're getting rid of it in their poo, which a lot of healthy dragons might have a little bit, but you don't want them to eat it and get it back in and just add on to what's already in there once they've gotten rid of it from, you know, the feces. So that's how you do that. I hope this video helps you out. Sorry it's so long. Um, any questions at all? let me know and this is what you need so I'm going to put a link in the description of this awesome stuff maybe I can get a good picture <laughs> and uh, and you can get started on a healthier reptile environment so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time